Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about a blending tool that is found in Photoshop that isn't really talked about too much. I have this image here that is underexposed, but it looks okay for the sky. Next to it, I have another image that is overexposed, but it looks okay for the bridge and the trees. And I used this blending tool that is found in Photoshop, blended the images, and ended up with this. It's been my experience that when a photographer needs to blend exposures, they'll most often either shoot HDR or they'll do some type of luminosity masking in Photoshop. And in most cases, either of those methods will work out great. But sometimes you may be a little bit disappointed in the results. And what I found is this method sometimes will work best in those odd situations. So it's good to know it. Now for this demonstration, I have this image here and it's a touch overexposed. It's more exposed for the darker parts of the scene. And next to it, I have another image that is exposed more for the snow and for the sky. And I'd like to blend these two exposures, but not do it in an HDR way. Now, to do so, what we're going to do is load them in a stack. Right now, I just have them each loaded into uh, Photoshop independently. So to load them into a stack, go up to File, then down to Scripts, and then down to Load Files into Stack. And what you need to do is just click on Add Open Files because these are already open in Photoshop and when I do, there they are. Now I want to attempt to automatically align the source images. I did not use a tripod, I handheld both of these shots. And even if you do shoot with a tripod, I recommend you click that box because sometimes little micro movements of the tripod will show up in the result. And I do not want to create a smart object, so I'm going to leave that unchecked and we're going to click OK. So what Photoshop is now doing, it's taking each of these images and stacking one on top of the other and it's aligning them and it opened them up in their own tab. So we still have the original images uh, untouched. Uh, there's the original dark image, there's the original lighter image, and now we have this new tab that contains both images, one stacked on the other, and they're aligned. And you can see when it did the alignment, I have some blank pixels on the right side along the bottom, and then it didn't align up on the top left and right because there's nothing on the dark image to align to that part of the light image. So it is what it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this blending that is in Photoshop that I'm very surprised isn't talked about a little more. To do it, uh, just click on one. And by the way, I should add, I'm not worried about the blank pixels, and you'll see uh, why in a moment. So click on one image over here in the layer stack, and then hold your Commander Control key and click on the other layer so that we have both layers highlighted or active. And then we're going to go up to Edit and then down to Auto Blend Layers. And when we do that, you'll see it has stack images. You want that because the images are stacked. This is not a panorama. Uh, we're doing seamless tones and colors. So make sure you uh, click there as well. And then we could have the option of doing using Content Aware to fill these transparent areas. So we'll click that. Now that may or may not turn out to look proper, but let's give it a shot. We'll just do it. If it doesn't look right, we'll just crop it away after the fact. So we're going to click OK. And what it's doing now, it's examining uh, each of the layers and it's determining what should stay, what should go, and what should get blended with what is below it. And once it's done, you'll see that we'll have three layers over here. Each of the bottom layers will have a layer mask. And then the top layer will be the actual blend of the two. And as you can see, it's still kind of thinking, and you'll see in a second that it will hopefully pop in and look proper. All right, now you see that it blended the two layers. And as a reminder, we'll go back here is the dark image. 
here is the light image. You could take a look at the sky up here and then look at the blended image. And you could see that it did a pretty good job. And you can see it still left the marching ants on the part of the image that had transparent pixels. Hit Command or Control D to get rid of the marching ants. And it really didn't do a great job. You could see that it looks smeared over here and smeared at the bottom. So I'm going to crop it away. I'm going to get the crop tool and I'm just going to probably pull in from the bottom right hand corner and just get rid of those kind of weird looking pixels and then click the checkbox. Now sometimes it works for those blank pixels and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't. Now to my eye, um, it does still look a little bright. Let's just look again. Here we have the original darker image. Here is the image that is overexposed or lighter. And then here is our blended image. Definitely much better, but I'd like to see a little more detail up in those clouds. Now it's a lot easier to rescue that detail that may be in those highlights that you want to uh, get out. So we're just going to get a levels adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to the mid-tone slider right in the middle and push that to the right a little bit. And maybe bring this highlights one left a little bit. So I kind of like that. So that finishes off the image. So that is a little known, little used uh, blending function that is found in Photoshop. Let me know if you've ever used it or if you think in the future you will use it. Again, it doesn't work perfectly on all images, but what I found is if you know how to do luminosity masks, if you know how to do HDR, and you know how to do this, between these three methods you should be able to uh, fix any exposure issues you have with any scene. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.